Good morning. Thank you for coming today. Today is two things. Our youth lead our service, and it's our quarterly meeting at the end of the service. So don't take off and run away, even though today is Salad Sunday. Super duper Salad Sunday. SSS. <clears throat> Super, no, SDS. That sounds like ADHD, or some of them initials, whatever they are. <clears throat> so, again, thanks for coming. Thanks for all y'all who are participating. And so today, I will have our opening prayer, and then we have a special presentation. And at the end of the special presentation, we have dual lay leaders today. <clears throat> I'm going to show you my prowess. Dose. I'm trilingual. I speak un poco tito Spanish. I speak English and American. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here this morning. We plead the blood of Christ over our service. And God, that you would be glorified in everything that takes place here today. God, I pray for a special anointing upon our young people. And God, that they would just step into the leadership roles that you have prepared for them. And God, that today they would just be taking a small step for our youth and a giant step for our church. Boy, that sounds like I'm parroting something that happened years ago. But God, today may the blessing of your spirit rest upon us. And may you be glorified, and we pray in Christ's name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the so I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, You'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed 
with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey. Good day. Thank you, Paul Harvey, for that very prophetic piece which aired on the radio in 1965. And good morning, I'm Kellen Riley and I am your lay leader today. And yes, you've stumbled into another service led by the kids of Plymouth. Don't worry, Pastor Bill and Andrew will be back next Sunday and are probably working on that service even as we speak, or not. Anyway, we are here today with a message which is choice. Every waking minute we are confronted with choices, to do something or not, to have super salad, coffee or tea, you get the idea. Pretty easy stuff, right? But what about the harder choices that we have to make? To tell a lie or the truth, to cheat on a test or not, to worship God or an idol of the world. These are the choices that matter and are not always easy ones to make. Hopefully, we can bring some clarity to you today on why we need to make the right ones. We started today on a very low note, but I promise that we will end on a very high one, literally. So, on to announcements. Immediately following our service will be PCC's quarterly meeting. Everyone is encouraged to attend as the various boards will report on what they have been up to the last quarter. It should be short and then onto our potluck called Salad Sunday. Boy, that is sure to the point. Who dreamed that name up? Oh, never mind. Anyway, everyone is welcome to attend. Are there any other announcements? So we all may or may not know that uh, Pastor Bill is doing a 100-mile bike ride uh, next Saturday, right? For me, a 100-mile bike ride would be next Saturday and probably the 20 Saturdays after that. But anyway, um, I thought it might be a kind of a, a fun thing to do if we um, sponsored him on that. Now, he intends on riding the whole 100 miles, so um, uh, be careful about your sponsorship because we're going to be sending Mr. Grimes around to uh, collect everything. Um, so in your bulletins, uh, there's a, a slip of paper, um, very simple, just put your name on it, um, how much you wish to sponsor him by the mile. So in other words, a dollar a mile is $100, and then you can do the math from there. And then um, put those in the um, collection plate, and, uh, or give them to me, or, uh, or yeah, give them to me after the service, if you don't do that. And then next Sunday, we'll see how we do, and... Um, uh, we're going to take the money that's raised and put it into the missions committee fund. So there you go. Thank you. Any other announcements? Seeing no more, please follow along as I read the call to worship. Father in heaven, we have come here to, today to worship you, to declare our allegiance to you, to denounce the ways of this world and take on the ways of yours. Help us, who are weak, to be strong in every choice that we make so that we might all worship you together in your kingdom forever and ever. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please stand and let's sing our praise hymn, number 21, How Great Thou Art.
Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to your covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things, and revive me in your way. Establish your word in your servant who is devoting to fear. You turn away my repro reproach, which I dread. For your judgments are good. Behold, I long your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40. And now please stand as we sing number 306, Standing on the Promises. And pay attention to Jan as we sing the final chorus. Ready, Jan?
In the church last week, a little boy fidgeted in his seat. He wanted to move. <clears throat> he wanted to move to another place rather than sit quietly in his seat. As moments ticked by, he gave up in his efforts and resolved instead to move in his shoes. I suppose he thought that if he couldn't walk, then why keep them on? So off the, came the shoes, and he curled up in his chair, eyeing who all around who were all around him. The shoes sat empty on the floor. He had no use for them, so for for them if he couldn't get down and move around. He chose to give up, which in this instance was probably a good thing. He could have been he could have been distracting as he did things his own way. Jesus longs for us to follow him in all his ways. He asks us to walk in his shoes. He wants us to walk in his way because he'll lead us to a better place. And yet, so many of us choose not to. We want to walk our own path in life, whether it is comfortable or not. We won't preserve in doing things his way because we feel it would be too hard for us. We prefer to remain in our unfulfilling, unfulfill, unfulfilling lives. In other words, we give up. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, he says, who, he who abides in him ought himself to walk just as he walked. The shoes that Jesus gives us are always a good fit. The trouble we, is we won't know unless we try them on and walk in them. Just as the little boy discarded his shoes because he no longer felt the need for them, we do the same to Jesus as we decide to go alone and do things our own way. Now, now we exhort your brethren, warn those who are untruly, comfort the unhearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good for both yourselves and others. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this w will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast and good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sant sanctify you com completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. One Theosons. Chapter 5, verses 14 through Hopefully you've had time to fill out the prayer request form that is found in your bulletin. Drew is going to come around and collect them, so please pass them to the center aisle. If you need more time, you can put them in the offerings place. While these are being collected, let's sing 619, God Will Take Care of You.
are going to be we are going to pray over these re requests and pastor will post them on his extensive prayer network so so many many people will be, will be praying for you let us pray god our father in heaven you knew the needs and requests of all of us before they were put into this box you know the silent requests which were not jesus said that we could ask anything in his name and it would be given so in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray that you will answer these requests you know we know that it will be in your own time and way in the meantime we ask you give peace and hope to those who have petitioned you amen Will the ushers please come forward? Thank you, Father, for these gifts, gifts, tithes, and, authoring, and offerings. May we be good stewards of the treasure that we have received, but also of the time and talent that is not in these plates, but expressed in our church every day. Please bless the givers of all three in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men who, to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, 
so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our own being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devises. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Acts 17, verses 24 through 31. In our message to get, Drew and Quinn are having a discussion about choices and which are and aren't really important. Are you ready, guys? Hi, Quinn. Hi, Quinn. Oh, uh, hey, Drew. Didn't hear you. Yeah, you look like either you're in deep thought or constipated. I uh, hope it's the former. Actually, neither. I'm pondering. Pondering, eh? Well, this should be good. So what are you pondering? Which I like better between two given things. Okay, so give an example. All right. What about Coke or Pepsi? Coke. White bread or wheat? White. Gold or silver? There's no such thing as silver bling. American cheese or cheddar? Well, since American isn't a cheese, how about Cubs or Sox? Not answering that question in front of this crowd. <laughs> Chevys or Fords? Well, since I'm not driving yet, okay, okay. I see where your little mind is taking you. You're, t you're talking about choices every day. Mundane, inconsequential choices. Okay, maybe mundane and inconsequential to you, but I care about my American cheese on my white bread sandwich with a Coke, thank you. Now, what could be more important than the choices we make like these every day? We're talking about our life here. Our life, American cheese, Cubs or socks. Do you even go to church? Have you been napping the whole time? I can't believe that you're in default about Yes and no. Hey, you're looking uh, pale. Can I get you some water or something? No, you can give me some common sense about what is important when we're talking about choices. Sorry, not following you. How about thinking about people in history who have made real choices? Hmm, still not following. Okay, okay. Remember hey, Abraham and Isaac? Remember his choice? Or about Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego? or Daniel's choice which led him to the lion's den, or Saul's choice when God confronted him on the road to Damascus, or the choice that Jesus made in Gethsemane. His destiny was clear, but he still had to make his choice. These are all great lessons, but I don't... These people put their faith and trust in God, not in the world, but in God. And God saw them through their choices. But the world can be fun. You can have a great abundance in the world as long as you adhere to God's commandments for you as you live in the world. Let me ask you a question about choice. An eternity in heaven with God or an eternity in the lake of fire with Satan? Oh, well, I'd have to choose heaven because I'm pretty sure God made American cheese. Right answer, but it's not cheese. Thank you. Thank you. And so, this is our service and message for today. We close with a passage from C.S. Lewis. It will be too late then to choose your side. There is no use saying that you choose to lie down when it has become impossible to stand up. That will not be the time for choosing. It will be the time when we discover which side we really have chosen, whether we realized it before or not. Now, today, this moment, is our chance to choose the right side. God is holding back to a, uh, yeah, God is holding back to give us a chance. It will not last forever. We must take it or leave it. Every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses into something a little different from what it was before, and taking your life as a whole, 
with all your innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning into the central thing, into a heavenly creature or a hellish creature, either a creature that is in harmony with God or with other creatures and with itself, or, or else of one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with his fellow creatures and with itself. To be one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy, peace, knowledge, and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at this moment is progressing to the one state or the other. End of quote. Hopefully you get it by now. Thank you for paying attention here today. Thanks to Pastor Bill for giving us the pulpit today. Thank you for Bob for the flawless bulletin. And thanks for Jan for lending us her amazing musical talents. We will be back on October 9th for the start of our seventh season. We started... <laughs> yeah, thanks to this guy right there, John Riley. He did all this. My man. We started this service on a somber note with If I Were the Devil. We are going to end it on a high note with a hymn that is usually reserved for Easter, but in the context of choices, chose this. Pastor, will you please come and close the service? Before we sing, I would like to share a scripture with you. It's in the book of Deuteronomy and it says this, I have set before you life and death. Choose. Which do you choose? Today, it's for us in America, it's fairly easy. We choose life. But for people who have to really stand up and declare the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior in a hostile environment, it's a real big decision. But do not be lulled to sleep. These young people have put, made their decisions. I was with Quinn in his confirmation class. I was with Kellen and Drew and many of our kids who have gone through confirmation. But confirmation in and of itself is no more than a class put on by a church. There has to be something that takes place in here. Decisions or choices, as our young people showed us today, is what we have to make every day. We make choices whether or not to stop at a stop sign. But just the moment that we decide we're not going to and we do, there goes a truck that blows the other side stop sign. God is amazing. He's put before us life and death. I'm grateful for these kids. They are the future. They are not the future leaders of our church. They are the church today. I'm so grateful to John and what he's done with these kids and the way he puts this together. I'm grateful for this day, and I, I, I'm kind of embarrassed that John mentioned the fact that I'm riding 100 miles next week. He said, how are we going to know you finished when I crawl in here <laughs> Sunday morning? <laughs> You'll know I finished. But I have no doubt that my daughter and I will finish the, the ride. And those of you who sponsor something for the missions, thank you. But our hymn, what number is that? 235? 235. I was asked to do this hymn and, and to lead this because I get a little excited with it. So let's stand and we'll sing this and then I'll benedict us right into the quarterly meeting. Miss Jan, please.
when we get to the refrain, get a good grip on your pliers, hold on to the seat, and watch very carefully, okay? Here we go. Dad. Sunday, he's going to be gone, and then he'll come back. He's going to do a special presentation and production during the time before that he comes back and that he leaves. I should have turned that on. I'm, but anyway, you understand that this is one of our leaders going away and going to come back, and we keep to pray for him, okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity today to be a part of this service. We thank you for our young people. We thank you for men like Quinn who are going off to protect us. And God, in a, in a day and age when we need all the protection we can gather, we stand under the blood of Jesus with the hedge of protection around us and your myriad of angels that guard us, Father. And we pray that very prayer for Quinn as he takes his trip, as he comes home, as we do a few things here, and then, God, as he goes off to become a Marine. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will bless us today, bless our meeting to come, and the food that we're about to receive at the end of this meeting. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Please be seated, and we'll, Mr. Conan will take off and do the meeting.